Hello, this is T Chapman 500. Today I'm going to be showing you an experiment that I'm doing. I have a Raspberry Pi 2 inside a screen case connected to a DSi touch screen. I have a USB keyboard that I've connected to the Raspberry Pi 2 so I can uh, do a bit of programming on it. Now, this red wire goes to a blue LED and I might kind of swap the red and blue wires around a little bit. The blue wire goes to a push button that I can use to terminate whatever program is running the GPIO pins that I need to terminate. Now, these three wires, red, no wait, orange, yellow, and green, will have a number on them, which goes to a decoder which will output to one of these eight LEDs. The button has a 10 kilo ohm pull down resistor just for safety and also for safety I've grounded the Raspberry Pi to the breadboard power supply. The breadboard is getting its power from a 9 volt 1 amp AC adapter and that's being brought down to 3.3 volts. I've made the decoder from a set of 5 discrete logic chips, one of which has 6 not gates, I'm only using three of them, and the other four contain four AND gates each. And I'm using all 16 AND gates. Now I've already prepped the GPIO pins, so I'm going to go run the test application. Here we go. And it's running. Now you're not going to be able to see this, but the program is actually telling me what the number on this line is as well as how many times it's looped through the program. In this case it's on its third loop iteration. Now it's on its fourth. The blue LED in this program is being used to indicate that the program is running. If I were to push this button Wait a couple moments. Then the program stops running. And I can also start it back up again. And I can actually interrupt it using control C. One moment. There we go. And it just holds whatever state it was at when I interrupted it. So let me... Um, just run the prep program again and that will reset the GPI opens. I wrote these programs in C++. They were originally written in shell script but they were incredibly slow at changing the GPIO states. So slow in fact that you could actually see the LEDs flash on incorrectly for a split second before the correct value was sent to the um, decoder. So now I'm using C++ after figuring out, actually looking up how to get a program to run on the GPIOs. And um, I'm still trying to figure out how to get GPIO to be just as fast without using the root access as it is using the root access because right now it just tries to map the GPIO addresses into the local program space and that requires root privileges to do that. Anyways, the decoder is eventually going to go on a PCB and I'm going to use a specialized decoder chip and the output of the decoder will be the input to a button matrix and there will be nine outputs from the button matrix going into the Raspberry Pi. The button matrix is going to be somewhat like a keyboard except it's not going to have as many features as a keyboard. It's going to have some more application specific keys that keyboards don't have. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope to be doing more videos, at least one every week, and I will see you next time. This is T Chapman 500 signing off.